For generations, All right. so the I've been receiving some questions recently about, you know, how do you make a wall macro, or how does a wall macro work, or, you know, um, you know, just various questions when I've been showcasing some of my macros, sharing my macros with other people, you know, what settings do I use, uh, what do these variables mean, how can I make my own macro, so I'm going to go over some things that you should know if you want to make a wall macro, as well as how I made mine, I'll break down the age case. And I will also provide every single macro that I've made uh, over the course of the last week, two weeks, week or so. Um, you know, I spent like four, five, six uh, IRL hours just, you know, working on these macros because I was bored. Pretty much when I was doing any runs, I, in my downtime, I would just work on macros. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about uh, the wall, right? So, the wall has a couple quirks that you need to know about before you make a macro, okay? So, first things first, uh, you might think, okay, it's really easy to make a wall macro, right? Well, it is kind of easy, but there are some things you should know about. So, theoretically, right, if the wall was, like, perfect and, you know, wasn't coded to be realistic or whatever, right, um, you could just shoot div... Uh, with like, I don't know, like a one millisecond cooldown or, second or something between each shot and just like shoot all the plates in whatever order that they need to be in and you'd be good, right? So like, for example, let's say you have something like, um, like this wish, right? You would just shoot every single plate and then you'd shoot every single plate again and again and again and then you'd stop and leave out certain plates that have already been correct. Uh, so for example, uh, in this instance, you have, um, you know, on the first wave, you see plates one, two, six, seven. Only are need to be only need to be shot once, right? And those plates correspond to, uh, you see here, that'd be one, two, six, and seven, right? And that's because fish left is actually the symbol that, um, you know, when you shoot a plate, it's the first one that appears, right? There's an order. So. Basically, what I'm saying is, you know, if the wish wall were perfect, uh, you could literally just shoot all the plates in whatever order you wanted, and, you know, the plates would instantly react and change to whatever you wanted them to be, right? Um, however, this isn't the case, right? Notice when I hold down fire on a plate, there's a extended period of time before the plate can change, right? Um, so I can't just, like, spam left click, and then, you know, it'll change every time I click. And then if that were the case, you know, my macro could be a lot faster, but you have to account for the fact that the wall has about like, I want to say 800 milliseconds of time um, before you can change a plate again. So there's a wall change cooldown is what I'm saying. Okay. The second thing you need to account for is that Divinity has recoil. Okay. It's a trace rifle. It shoots light. Um, I'm not sure why it would have recoil. It's like have a flashlight having recoil, but in this game, trace rifles have recoil. So you'll see, you know, it slowly goes up. So when you're moving around that quickly, you don't need to account for recoil as much, but it's still a factor. And so I did include a recoil control variable as well as a recoil compensator in my auto hotkey script. Okay. And the last thing you need to be aware of is that the wall will not register inputs correctly when certain events are triggered in the wish raid while you're in it, okay? So if a new objective happens and, you know, this area becomes a darkness zone because someone just hit Kali or something, your wall will suddenly stop working for a few seconds, okay? If you just reset the wish wall, right? Notice how some of those plates flickered. Until those plates flicker, the wish wall will not correctly receive inputs, okay? Um, if you just input a wish, as you've probably seen in a video that I've done before, um, there's a short period of time where the wish wall won't take any inputs, um, and that kind of makes sense, right? You just you put in a wish, the, the plates are still flashing, right? And then, you know, if you, what is it? If you, like, get on the plate, get off, you know, enter and exit loads, the plates will also not receive inputs correctly. So that's just something you need to be aware of. If you approach the wall solo, like I did in my video, it should be very straightforward. Uh, if you do it with other people in the fire team, it may be a little bit more finicky, but that's the, you know, that's the deal with macros, right? Like, you know, it's not going to be perfect. And I may release the, you know, I'm going to upload these macros to like a Google Drive folder in the description of this video, probably. But like, if you use the macro, it's probably not going to be the exact 
same as my situation like your cpu may be slower or your network may be worse or if you do it in a fire team with other people that may change the consistency of the macro which is why i've also included several speed variables and recoil variables that you can change to your will uh if you so choose okay so it's my topics for this video but i do also want to include some things um my in-game sensitivity does need to be matched it's eight um, my ADS sensitivity is 1, but I don't think that matters, like the ADS modifier, but that doesn't really matter because you're not ADSing. And um, my screen bounds are set to maximum, and my FOV is also maximum. Okay, that is something you should know. Okay? Alright, now let's move on to actually how do you code, you know, an auto hockey wall macro. Okay? So, this is one of my macros, right? This is the, the ribbon macro. It's quite fast. Um, and... Let me just show you how I coded it, okay? So all my macros are F3 to start, F4 to stop. I mean, I could have chosen other other keys, but I just kind of, I don't know, I just chose random keys, F3 and F4. And um, at the start here, I declare four global variables. I do position X, position Y, recoil, and cycle time. These are very self-explanatory. Position X and Y are two variables I use to keep track of where the cursor is on the wall at any given moment. And recoil is how much am I compensating for divinity going up? So how much do I need to go down, uh, you know, if divinity is going up? So 3.5 units here. Um, that means that every time I change between plates, my divinity is going to compensate and go down 3.5 units because I know that during the time that I'm shooting the plate for that brief period of time, it's going up about 3.5 units. So recoil and cycle time are kind of tied together. They have like a logarithmic relationship. And you can see that in my um, recoil graph here. This is kind of approximate, but it seems that, you know, everything over like 70 milliseconds or so, um, you know, the recoil can be the same. That's kind of like Div's base recoil or whatever. And then as you go faster and faster, you can account for recoil less and less. So there's kind of like a logarithmic relationship there. Um, yeah, but anyways, going back to my um, macro... So yeah, I've determined 3.5 recoil and a cycle time of 55 to be stable on my system. Um, you may need to slow this down and increase cycle time on your system. I'd be surprised if you could decrease the cycle time any lower than 50 and not reach consistency issues. Um, so if I were to lower this to like 40 milliseconds, right? So cycle time is the milliseconds between each shot. Um, if I were to lower it to 40, uh, which I have tested in the past, uh, First of all, that's a lot harder to code for. And second, uh, the wall will just not receive inputs. Like you're firing faster than the game can actually receive inputs. So this is about as fast as you can go consistently. Okay. Now you've also seen like, you know, a bunch of these loops and whatever, and I'll go over how that works in a second. So in order to make my life easier, right, I made a shoot function and I also made a switch statement here with a bunch of cases. And you'll notice there's exactly 20 cases and those correspond to the 20 plates on the wall. Right. So originally in older versions of my macros, I had like a coordinate system where I did like one, five, two, five or whatever. Um, I just find this to be easier. You know, I only have to type one number. There's one to five, 16 to 20. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. There's 20 plates. Right. And so how I did that is I just, you know, went in and tested all the coordinates of every single plate uh, from the same starting position, which is I just kind of put my foot right there and I aim in the middle of those two plates. Right. And um, that's my starting position. And from there, I just, you know, tested where every single plate is, you know, case one, uh, you know, I flick over there, boom, make sure it's in the middle of the plate, boom. So I've already done all this work for you. You don't need to do anything. Um, but yeah, there you go, 20 cases, right? And then how the shoot function works, pretty, sim sim blah, 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 pretty simple. Um, you know, you remove your previous column and row information, and then I do a DLL call, which is how AutoHotKey V1 is used to move the cursor uh in games with camera so in games with first person perspective uh and then you know the, there's some variables here but the most important ones are these two these two arguments in the statement here um this one is basically it's column which is my preset column you know uh value based on whatever cell i'm trying to shoot whatever, whatever uh plate i'm trying to shoot on the wall and then i subtract the current position and the reason for this is Auto hotkey V1 does not have any support for direct coordinates in a 3D space. So what that means is basically, you know, if I have a 3D space, so like I have like a camera like this in a video game, 
uh, I can't put input like specific coordinates on that 3D, you know, spherical plane. Uh, I need to use relative coordinates. And um, that's why some people use AutoHockey V2 to make their wall macros. I use AutoHockey V1 because I'm lazy and I didn't want to install uh, AutoHockey V2. So, um, you know, this is pretty much as fast. You're basically just telling Windows to do a mouse event where you move your mouse a certain, you know, number of pixels or units in a certain direction relative to where your crosshair currently is. And basically what I'm doing is I am taking the current position of my crosshair. So let's say I'm on this plate and I know it has a certain X and Y value. Then I subtract that X and Y value from the current value that I know. And then boom, that's going to be back to zero, zero. And then you add whatever column and row value you want. So that's, I mean, that's kind of like basic math. It's just like, you know, whatever position you're in, reset it to zero and then add whatever position you want to be in next. Okay. And then recoil is obviously straight up. So I have my recoil modifier here um, and that will adjust how much you're compensating going down, right? So in auto hockey, uh, plus Y is actually in the down direction. So, um, you know, if I add more recoil every time, then it'll go down more. So higher recoil value, more compensation, okay? Um, and then, you know, you just set your position to whatever the current column and row is, because, you know, that makes sense. And then you're done. That's that's the shoot function, okay? So that is um, pretty much how the macro works on an auto hotkey level. Now let's discuss, you know, why did I shoot them in this order, right? Why did I choose to make loops like this? And why not just, you know, do it like I said earlier. So shoot every single plate that appears in the macro or appears in the wish once, and then keep doing that and then keep leaving out, you know, every single like drop off every single plate that is correct you know what i'm saying so like shoot all them and then shoot all them except that one and then shoot all them except that one and that one and you know you know what i'm saying so why didn't i do that well it's not fast okay it's not fast um the way to optimize a wall macro is you want to be able to shoot every plate as often as the game will physically allow you to okay and what i've discovered is um, given the speed of my macro, which is, you know, 55 millisecond cooldown between plate shots, um, I can shoot 10 plates. I can do 10 plates before I have to revisit, before I can revisit the first plate. Okay, so I can shoot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then if I go back to the first plate, it'll change. If I shot 9 and then went back to the first plate, it would still be on cooldown. That's how fast this macro is, right? So notice here, like, you know... If I shoot as a human, right, I can shoot it a second time, it'll change. My macro, what I'm saying is it goes so fast that you need to shoot 10 more plates, 10 more plates worth of time, uh, or nine more plates worth of time before you can revisit that one and it'll, it'll, it'll let you shoot it. It'll let you shoot it, okay? So that's what I'm saying there. Um, so what does that mean? Well, that means that I have to optimize my macro around getting exactly 10 plates every time. Right, 10 plates every time, 10 different plates every time is what I should be saying, okay? So for example, if you look at Riven, right, you see a bunch of 10s, right? So th this this bottom row here is just counting how many plates I shoot in each cycle, right? You see a bunch of 10s and then a seven and then a five. So basically what that means is my macro can operate for basically full speed all the way until here. And then when it reaches here, I need to slow down the cycle time a little bit because it's shooting, you know, seven instead of 10. Um, so basically, yeah, that that's that's... How you optimize a macro uh, if i really really was going hard in the pain on this i would be writing an algorithm that separates every plate um that basically takes the chain of numbers that i have and makes it so that there is a minimum distance of uh you know nine between each one uh, each unique number and then you know leaving all the sh uh, leaving all the sh the remaining plates at the back of the macro okay um what i've done here is essentially the same thing i mean i did this by hand but, um, you know, this is as good as it gets for the most part. You could optimize it a tiny bit more. But um, mathematically speaking, like something like the failsafe macro just can't be optimized because it uses six plates, right? Only six plates. So you can't shoot 10 physically. And one of the plates needs to be shot 14 times and the others all need to be shot twice, which is why if you watch my previous video where I input every single non-encounter wish into the wall, um, you know, that, that macro is really slow, right? It looks really, really slow compared to the ribbon macro. And that's because... I can't make it any faster. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, that's all you need to know. Um, so yeah, that means, you know, if you want to do it the math way, like I have basically just distribute your shots so that you're shooting 
you know, all your plates as often as possible. And, you know, you're revisiting plates that need to be shot more than others more frequently. Okay, that, that's the main idea behind it. Okay. Uh, and then if you do choose to do something like a fail safe macro, you're going to need to increase the cycle time at that time. But the nice thing about <clears throat> the way that I've designed this program is that you can easily change the cycle and recoil time by simply inserting a statement in between any of these loops or literally anywhere. So you could do like cycle time 200 in here, but obviously you need to change the, change the recoil to, to match, right? So that being said, you know, really easy, you know, if you want to change the macro so it's slower because it's not working for you, you can put like, you know, 70 and then, you know, here are the recoil values if you need them, you know, pause the video. Uh, if you want to make it slower, you use one of these, make it faster, use one of these and put one for 60, but you know what I'm saying? It's so like, you know, for example, you might put like 70 and four and that would work, right? Um, so yeah, that's how I made my wall macros. Um, pr pretty helpful, you know? Um, these are pretty nice because Luxstruck doesn't always have the non-Shiro wishes, the non-Shiro encounters. Sometimes uh, I have some friends who are like wish farmers, they want to practice transitions. So uh, instead of me having to load them in, I'm going to make this video. I'm going to release all my macros that I've been working on um, to the public on a Google Drive folder. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments uh, or you can DM me on Discord. I'm Aegis 8622 and um, yeah, I don't... I don't think there's anything left, right? I feel like I'm forgetting to mention something, but I I, I don't know. I probably am not. Um. Okay, yeah. Actually, let's talk about what I'm gonna upload into that folder. So I'm just gonna upload the contents of this folder right here, my my wall macro folder. Um. So the wall the macros are all named according to their wish. So you have like failsafe, eggs, emblem, you know, glittering key, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I have wall order, which I used. Okay, I don't really. This is this is uh, from. From some older stuff um i have a, a wall order text thing so if you want to make your macro yourself um you know this is how many times you need to shoot each plate if you want to make it become a certain symbol right so this is pretty helpful for me and then what else we got we got wall topics which are the topics for this video and we got wall coordinates i think these are old uh probably don't use these but yeah I think those are old but yeah every single macro i made uh if you go to you know notepad plus plus or whatever you want to open it with all of the coordinates are built in, they're baked in, so you can make your own macro. You know, you can make a smiley face on the wall, you can just, you know, just put shoot in whatever plate you want to do. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. Peace.